Hello, good morning. Good morning again. Thank you very much, Karsh, for accepting uh, our invitation to talk to us, to Sports at TV. How are you? How are you feeling after the Tokyo success? Did you have some time to, to rest, to take some rest? Uh, of course, it's a wonderful accomplishment and feeling. We have not had a lot of time with, uh, with other tournaments going on, the European teams getting ready for their European championships and uh, our team getting ready to play in Norseca Continental Championships. We're not coaching that one, but we are coaching the next tournament. And so we've been in preparations for that, for Pan American Cup. And um, yeah, so always looking forward and trying to get better. If I bring you back uh, three weeks ago to the Tokyo success and to the final match against Brazil, what was the key to the success? I mean, statistically, of course, we all saw that uh, the USA team, they outperformed the, the Brazilians on, on all counts. But I guess there is something behind the scenes, maybe some secret spirit. I don't know if there, if it was anything secret, but certainly our team for a long time has had a goal of, um, we know we're the kind of team that doesn't have one player who can dominate offensively and who can um, take over no matter how many blockers, no matter how many defenders. And we have to play more of a um, all around team volleyball. And so a, a big goal of ours going into every tournament and especially the Olympic tournament was we wanted to be the closest team, the most, um, the team with the best connections and the best teamwork and the best communication and the best trust to, to basically try to out team our opponents. That was our goal. And I think we were able to accomplish that. Yeah, okay. maybe we can tell, say that, that this was the difference uh, for your team compared to Italy, where you have one Pal Paolo Egonen and of course other players, but then you have Serbia where you have uh, Boscovic. They have one star players and they rely um, a lot on their players. And maybe the USA women team, they try to, to, to enter the court as a team and not focus on only one player. Can you? Uh, that's our goal. We don't, we don't have a player like those players that you mentioned or like Ju Ting for China. And um, we, we like playing the way we play, which is uh, not depending on, on, uh, on one player so much especially because if things don't go so well for that one player, then the, the team's chances can be more difficult. So um, we love the way we play and we just try to play as um, uh, the, at the highest level of team in team volleyball that we can. How much does this gold medal uh, mean for the USA team? It's a long awaited and much desired medal also for you as a coach? Um, I, what I tell people is that I'm ecstatic for, uh, incredibly happy for our team, for this special group of women. I call them badass, like great, just, um, women who are uh, incredibly hardworking and intelligent and powerful and disciplined and everything else that you can think of. But I'm incredibly, I'm, I'm ecstatic for the team, for, the, for our badass women and for our program that after 11 other tries at the Olympics, 12 if you count a boycott in 1980, <clears throat> uh, and after decades of suffering and coming really close, three silver medals and two bronze medals, uh, including three medals in the three previous Olympics, um, our team and our badass women finally have stood, have reached the summit of volleyball's highest mountain, and they will forever be Olympic champions. Actually, yes, I saw your post-match interview with uh, Halle Washington, and you are both in tears, and you call them badass uh, women, and you are so happy. 
uh, we could all all see uh, your emotion, yours uh, and um, of the players. How important is emotion in volleyball nowadays, on and off the court? Because it's a both sided, I believe, double sided thing. Maybe too much emotion during matches can play <laughs> a negative role, but without emotion in volleyball also is not an option. How important is it? It's very difficult to have too little emotion at the Olympic Games. It's a, an incredibly intense tournament. Um, so the important thing is dur before leading up to each, uh, each match and during each match is trying to, uh, for me, I was trying to stay very even and steady uh, and not ride emotions. We had some difficulties, we had some injuries, we had a coach who uh, couldn't, wasn't allowed to do her job um, the way she normally would. So we had some challenges. Every team had some challenges and we have to try to stay really even through that. But then when it was done, that was a time where we could let our emotions out more. Can this be maybe a piece of advice to your young colleagues, coach, coaches that are taking up on their career to try to maintain the level of emotion during the matches and then uh, balance that? Or, it, or uh, each case is uh, specific and maybe. It's personal. possible. Um, I think each, uh, each coach has to find her voice or his voice that fits what she or he stands for. And some coaches are far more emotional. I've seen some coaches diving on the sideline when as their players dive to try to make the play. Um, so we each have to find our own voice and not try to be like anybody else and also have to find a voice that's right for the team that you're coaching. So there's no, there's no perfect answer. And uh, each answer is different for each coach and different for each team that that coach coaches. Was this maybe a challenge to you when you started coaching or it was you again as a player and how did you do this transition, maybe? Um, that's a good question. I, it, it was, a, it is a challenge for me because as a player, um, uh, I probably demonstrated more fire, anger, um, um, and other emotions. Um, and that was right for me as a player, generally, with the teams that I played on, indoors and on the beach. But then I have to find, um, I'm, I've always been working to find my coaching voice, and I want, um, I have to find the right balance between the fire and passion and the calm and the poise. Do you believe that this coaching voice changes depending on the team that you're coaching? Yes, I think so. Team? Yeah. Bringing you back to the beginning when you were a kid, you started playing with your father, who was, if I'm not mistaken, also he was part of the Hungarian national team as a player. Or he, not? Was, uh, he was on the Hungarian junior national okay. team. And then, of course, he escaped. Uh, during the failed revolution in 1956, and he left his family to come to America, but he uh, brought with him certainly his love for sports, for volleyball, and of course everybody who grows up anywhere in the world except the United States grows up with a great love for world football, for soccer, and so those were the two sports that I learned most from him growing up, volleyball and world football. But we can call call him the guilty one for you to start uh, <laughs> to take up on the, the volleyball. Was it indoor volleyball right. or beach volleyball in the beginning? Uh, when I first started playing, when I was six years old, he um, we had moved out to California just for one year. Mm -hmm. He was just done with medical school. And so he was now starting to become a full doctor, a full medical doctor. And so we moved to Santa Barbara, California, and he worked very hard during the week. 
uh, as what we call an intern. It's the first year out of medical school. Okay. They often work 90 or 100 hours a week. They work very, very long hours. But on weekends, he would have some time off and we would go to the beach because he fell in love with this new game that he had not played much in Hungary, and that's two on two beach volleyball. So he would be playing and he loved it there uh, in Santa Barbara at East Beach. It's a, still one of the world's greatest places to just play volleyball. They have over, I just drove through there recently. I think it was over 20 courts and uh, for women, for men, um, it's, it's wonderful. And so between games, he and I would, would just try to keep the ball going. I wasn't playing on a court at that time. We would just see if we could keep it going five times or 10 times and, and eventually we, we uh, kept it going. So that's where I, I learned uh, just to put my arms, my hands together and my arms together to start trying to make a, um, um, an underhand, uh, what we might call a bump or a forearm pass. You mentioned that you also started learning soccer from him, yes? Or yes. But why then you chose volleyball? <laughs> I played both for a long time. Uh, and he coached me in some teams. So um, I played a lot of soccer, organized soccer, maybe age 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, and a lot of volleyball, but I just, I loved volleyball more. I was better at it. I was pretty good at soccer, but not like I was at volleyball. Do you remember your father maybe giving you an important advice when you were just starting as a former uh, athlete himself? And also you said that he was very hardworking, dedicated to his medical uh, studies and work. Do you remember him as special advice? Well, um, I started just touching the ball when I was six, but then when I was 11, he and I started playing tournaments together. So he was my first teammate and my first coach. And we played together for about four years. Oh. Um, they had no, at that time, there were no tournaments for kids or for age groups. So we just played against grown men and it was wonderful for me. Um, and so I loved the time I got to spend with my dad. Um, I don't know that he specifically coached me all the time, but I just learned from him because I played next to him. And probably the thing I learned most from him was how, uh, how much he cared about the next play and how hard he worked on that one play. He had great passion for the game and passion for playing at one point at a time. And this is actually what Donald Sexual told me in our conversation, the former setter of uh, USA Man Team. Uh, maybe you have seen our interview on Sports TV that when he migrated to the USA, this is what he changed and his uh, mindset, you know, playing one point at a time and thinking about the next move, not about the error, for example, that he had just made, but the next point and the next point and always yeah. fo focusing on what you can bring the best from, uh, <laughs> from, uh, from yourself. Did your father or did you, did this age started dreaming big? Was this your motto or it was just, let's think about the next point? <laughs> um, both my parents were, have always been great supporters of me. I'm very lucky and I'm lucky that they're still alive and doing well in their 80s. They're both well into their 80s and lucky that they're both still together. So I grew up always having a, a mom and dad together and not everybody gets that, um, that good fortune, but, and especially that they were both so supportive of me in my career. But I think when I really started to think uh, more about bigger things about the future was when I was 15 years old and the Montreal Olympics was going on and there was a great team from the Soviet Union a great team from Cuba and of course the great team from Poland with people like um, Ed Skorak and um, Mr. Wojtovich and um, I don't think Gushiniak was setting for them then, but he helped them win a world championship two years earlier. 
so had they had all these great players and we had no internet no youtube and so i was really looking forward to watching them on television and i was waiting and watching and waiting and watching for most of two weeks to okay. see some volleyball and i almost missed it i think i went to take a quick bathroom break and <laughs> almost missed it they only showed a, a few minutes of what was to that point the most exciting final that had ever been held it went all five sets all five games incredibly exciting between poland and the soviet union and um and so maybe they showed three minutes of that and so i was really disappointed because i wanted to see uh, these guys I thought of as my idols. I wanted to see, I only saw pictures. I never got to see them um, in live motion. And so it was then I realized the reason they showed so little was because our USA team was not even in the competition. We, we weren't good enough to qualify. And so that's when I started thinking about how can I help the USA be better be a, 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 a player that makes the team better so that we can qualify for the Olympics. And then maybe even better still, a team that could contend and fight for a medal. See, so if I get you right, you didn't start dreaming about trophies, but you started dreaming about becoming better in order to help the, the uh, Yeah, I, wa I, wanted, I, I wanted the USA men to be competing in the Olympics, and I wanted to be a part of that group that would compete in the Olympics. Wanted, uh, it would be great to see the USA women doing well also, even though I was thinking just as a player about the men's team. But uh, yeah, I, I realized that American television is not going to show much in the way of a sport if there are no Americans doing well in that sport. There are no Americans competing in an individual sport or in a team sport. So I had to be a part of helping the team get a lot better. And when I joined the team in 1981, we were ranked, I think, 19th in the world because that's what we had finished in the previous world championships. And so we had a lot of work to do yeah. to go from 19th in the world to eventually number one in the world. Three years only, yeah, to the 84 Olympics? Correct. Even though I don't know that I could say we were the number one team in the world, maybe, but we didn't get to learn that uh, because of a boycott. The politics. On the one hand, in 1980, the USA led a boycott of the uh, Moscow Olympics, and then there was a yeah. reverse boycott by the Soviet Union and other Eastern Bloc countries of the 1984 Olympics. So while we won that Olympics, there were still big question marks in our mind. Uh, how could we do with, in a tournament with the Soviet Union? Mm -hmm. We got to start learning those answers the next year in the 1985 World Cup, and then in the World Championships, and in the next Olympics. And that's why some of us stayed on is because we wanted to play in an Olympic Games that was uh, m as strong as possible instead of missing some of the best teams. Yeah, I believe I read somewhere uh, in the internet that this medal from 88 from Seoul means a little bit more to you compared to the one from, from uh, 84 because of this, uh, this reason. But generally speaking, I believe this is also- I, th I think they were a little different. There was something yeah. really special about um, in 1984, the women winning a silver medal the night before uh, against China. And then the next night we beat Brazil. Um, there was something incredibly special about those two teams being the first to earn any medals to do anything significant at the Olympics. Even though those tournaments were not as strong as they could be, uh, and plus the first time is something incredibly euphoric. And then, but the bigger accomplishment was four years later when we got to play the Soviet Union in the final. You have seen everything in the USA volleyball, the beginning, as you say, when you were ranked 19, and then nowadays you're one of the, the top team, I would say. What were, if you think nowadays, what were the right policies that uh, USA volleyball implied 
applied to become this good? It's a long-term work, we can tell. It's a continuous Yes, work. for sure. Um, in the 1960s and 1970s, uh, for, the, for the most part, until the late 1970s, USA tried a way that wasn't working. And that was, we had some very good volleyball players. Uh, there was a, a world-class player named Gene Selznick in the late 1950s. He was actually, I think, voted to the old tournament team in the 1958 World Championship, something like that, 56. And uh, so we had some great players, but they spent almost no time together. They would only get together for a week or two of training and then go to try to qualify for the Olympics or try to compete in the Olympics. But that didn't work very well. Uh, the USA men and the USA women failed to qualify for the Munich Olympics and failed to qualify for the Montreal Olympics. And so then USA finally learned there has to be a different way. The teams have to spend more time together each year. And the women actually, uh, and the men, both started doing that in 1977, uh, spending much more time together. And so we needed uh, basically a year round program instead of a program that was only a few weeks here and a few weeks there. And then we also needed um, great coaching and both teams got both the women and the men got those things and the women actually qualified for the Moscow Olympics, but didn't get to compete. And then we both got to compete in 1984, not because we had to qualify, but because we were hosts, but we were also much, much better because of all the time we spent together. Yeah, actually, I believe we can, uh, we can see also this uh, kind of uh, uh, preparation in other teams nowadays. If you look at Italy with the Club Italia, and also believe Spain are implementing that and okay, they have a lot to, a work, of work to do, but they are starting to, to, to adopt this, this policy. And yeah, maybe it's the right one working for, for a long-term. Uh, yeah, I think it's definitely working better is uh, to think long-term in terms of development. And like you say, Club Italia and helping junior players, younger players uh, develop giving them more opportunities to see volleyball at a higher level and play against and with people who play at a higher level. If I bring you back on a more personal level <laughs> and the dream big, you have won practically everything that there, that there is and that can be won. But one thing that is remarkable about you is that you remain down to earth and you remain focused. How did you do that? And how can you like advise younger, other younger players, talented players, that maybe forget sometimes that, okay, you win one trophy, but then you have another one. How can you find inspiration? How can you remain down to it? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably making the mistake right now of not enjoying what we just did in Tokyo enough because I know in less than three years, the next one's coming in, in Paris. And so we're already thinking forward how could we make it possible to try to do that again? It's really fun to do it once. Maybe we could do it more than once. So, um, so I'm probably thinking too much. That's my habit is always to think forward and to think what, how I can be better tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, how um, our players can be better and how our team and program can be better. Um, uh, but that's also how I played. You mentioned it before. I'm not thinking so much backward, but always about the, the next play, um, the next action, the next, my next responsibility uh, in, in my job as a player or as a coach. I was actually about to ask you what is your next goal, but you just <laughs> answered. And I was thinking maybe, okay, you have gold medal as a player, you have gold medal as a beach volleyball player, you have gold medal as a coach. The one that is missing is like coach of a beach volleyball team. Have you thought about this? <laughs> um, I have thought about it just a little bit. I love what I do. I'm, I'm incredibly uh, fortunate and honored and privileged to be a coach of this team. The women 
uh, who play for this program are just a, a, a phenomenal people and who also happen to be phenomenal volleyball players and our staff, the women and men who are part of our staff are also incredible people we had. I can't imagine having a better group of coaches and uh, support staff, physiotherapist, strength and conditioning coach, all the people that we had who made us better. Uh, we had a really, really special staff through this last Olympic Games. And so I, I'm really fortunate to get to work with so many great people. And um, I would lose a lot of that uh, in thinking about coaching a team on the beach. So uh, that's not been a big thought of mine. I don't know, maybe someday that changes, but right now I'm really enjoying what I'm doing here. Do you still, do you still go play beach volleyball from time to time? Uh, say that again? Do you still go playing beach volleyball from time to time? Um, very rarely. I'll play a little bit of beach volleyball with our boys. One will, he's going to turn 31 in a few weeks and the other is 29 and they still play for fun sometimes. Um, if we don't have very many people here, I'm, I'm here in Anaheim at our home gym, our office and, and where we train. And we have small group training in a little bit. And if we don't have many people, I'll jump in and play a little bit. But once we have enough for uh, four on four or six on six, then we then I'm here to coach, not to play. But yeah, I'll, I'll help out a little playing. And uh, but that's uh, um, so it's still fun to do a little of that. But that's not uh, the priority in my job. Yeah, because I read somewhere back in 96, you said that beach volleyball was a lot of fun. And if you want to achieve something, it's just the old system, training, training and training. So it was like really interesting uh, to me to hear your thoughts on beach volleyball and also on what's happening today in the beach volleyball world. OK, one last message to, uh, to our uh, followers. Uh, why volleyball? Why do we love volleyball? Why do we read volleyball, play volleyball, write about volleyball? And, What's, what did it mean? <laughs> I think it is one of the quintessential team sports because in world football, in basketball, uh, the ball can go to a player and that player can hold on to the ball for a long time. But in volleyball, as soon as it comes to me, I have to give it right back. I, I don't get to grab and hold on to the ball, catch the ball or receive it in world football and hold on and take it down the field. So um, the sport is all about, um, it, it seems to be even more about teamwork because as soon as the ball comes to me, I have to give it to a teammate or send it across the net. And that's one of the things that draws me most to volleyball is the fact that it is such a team game and that we're only as good as our teammates, both the teammates who are on the court, but also as we were saying all during the Olympics, we're much more than just the seven people who are playing right now. We're, we're 12 strong in because of the 12 people that we had in Tokyo, every one of them was critical to our uh, to our effort there, but even more importantly, we, we said it all year, we're 23 strong. We have 23 players who are the primary group of players who are part of our program, but we only got to take 12 to Tokyo. The other 11 we did not get to take there. Um, even if we could have brought them, we, uh, or if we had the money to bring them, we couldn't because no foreigners were allowed in the country at that time. Uh, but they all were really important in making us better and good enough to be to do what we did in Tokyo. To sum up, maybe volleyball makes us all better people, better person. Like that would be the ball. hope for sure. It it teaches us really important things about life. About, uh, but that's that's true for other sports too, uh, because there are thousands or millions of games going on all over the world today, and. And out of those games, half the teams are winning and half the teams are losing. And
And so it teaches us how to handle adversity, how to handle difficulty, how to lose and learn to be better from losing. Um, and, and when you play a team sport, it also teaches you how to work well with other people because that's what you do with your family. You have to work well with the people in your family. You have to work well with the people at your, uh, at your job. And so when you are a better teammate and when you bring the best out of people, you can have a much more successful life. So there are some really great lessons that come from playing a team sport. Let's do sports. Thank you very much again for your time. It's, it was a honor for me. Thank you. Thank you and good luck with the rest of uh, all Euro volley, both on Thank the you. women's and the men's side. Thank you.